welcome to the Southeastern Ethnobotany Channel. We're going to go through a few plants here in here in the middle of the, the Cherokee Worldview Garden that are up in December. Not a lot is up out of the ground for you to see and beautiful and green. But we're going to start here with this beautiful specimen of Yopon. Um, this, of course, is a southeastern um, holly that is present from, say, Virginia all the way over to Texas, but only really in the coastal plain. Um, it's a beautiful member of the holly family. You can tell that this one is a female in particular because of the presence of these beautiful red berries. Um, and the reason that it's in the Cherokee Garden is because this represents one of the plants that Cherokee people traded for. Their original territories didn't overlap where this plant is naturally distributed, so they had to go to other tribes to find this plant and to be able to use it in daily life. So some of the early drawings of this plant actually come from uh, people, uh, European people who met uh, Native Americans on the shores of, of the coast when they were first here. Uh, some of the early drawings depict uh, Native Americans drinking large amounts of this and, and then of course vomiting. Um, and so this plant, uh, this plant's scientific name, the current one that is, is Ilex vomitoria and that reflects some of those earlier drawings um, that were done by early plant explorers. Um, it's kind of sad that this plant went on to be named that simply because it's filled with caffeine. And so perhaps uh, the Southeast might be drinking um, tea from this particular plant had it not been named such a, an awful name, giving people the idea that if you drink it or ingest it, you're going to throw up. Um, it's a, a really delightfully flavored tea, and certainly it was used as a purgative by Native Americans, but it was also used daily, on a daily basis by Native Americans. And we know that partly because of the trade records uh, that demonstrate that basketfuls of this plant were being carried from the low country areas uh, throughout the southeast, all the way up into the mountain communities where Cherokee people were. And then William Bartram writes about this plant as he comes across a town by the name of Ioli that's close to present day Franklin, North Carolina. And he, he actually walks, walks up on a plantation of this plant. And the reason that that's so significant is because the plant doesn't grow there natively. And so obviously uh, Cherokee people were transplanting this plant to the mountains so that they could have um, easy use of it. Uh, to my knowledge, this plant hasn't persisted in the landscapes today in the mountains, and I suspect that's due to um, perhaps extreme climate differences as compared to, where, uh, to how that climate exists in the native range of this plant. But I would say that this plant is also uh, a cultivar. You can find beautiful varieties of this plant in the horticultural trade. Uh, you can find a small, low-growing bush form. You can find a tall one that has weeping arms. Uh, or you can find things like this plant that is, is its native structure, except for that this is in a beautiful, sunny environment. So it's, it's a full bush bushy form of yopon. Beautiful plant and here again in the Cherokee Garden to demonstrate the trade was a, a major way that Cherokee people fulfilled their needs for food, um, plants for food and plants for medicine and all sorts of other things.